buzz, buzz, look out, it's the injury bug. Make sure it doesn't land on you. I'm Adam Wilmot from What Culture. It's Michael Harper from What Culture. And we're here to tell you about 20 injured WWE superstars and when they are set to return. Oh, poor little guy. Ser- seriousness? Yeah. Injury, injured wrestling. Right, let's move on and talk about CM Punk. He tore his right tricep in his first match in uh, WWE in a decade, I think it was. Yeah. And everyone is so excited for his return, of course. Um, six month recovery spell. Obviously, he's been doing bits of physical stuff mm-hmm. in the ring. One would assume he is going to be back in time for SummerSlam, an imminent return, basically. Yeah. They're sort of hedging their bets with involving Seth Rollins, of course, mm-hmm. and all the Drew stuff as well. But yeah, I reckon he'll be back by August. Yeah, he hasn't been any less of a captivating presence. Kel Surprise um, <laughs> over the past few months while he's been injured. Been perfect for promo stuff, which he always is. And they've been, as you say, very clever with Seth Rollins, with the fact that when we hear message of him getting clear, or oh, he's down at the performance center run the ropes and then he'll do a bit of interaction but it, it like even the biggest thing he's had to take we didn't see him take it yeah. Drew McIntyre beat down on Smackdown was of course well he just beat down on some jelly babies didn't he <laughs> but the, uh, the implication was far more than the actual physicality so but yeah Come back soon, Punker. We miss you. If it's not SummerSlam against Drew McIntyre, it's still going to be against Drew McIntyre. Yeah. It's the biggest match WWE has realistically on the books when uh, when he's physically ready. Mm. Um, but somebody that won't be good to go, unfortunately, for the rest of 2024 is Asuka. Yeah, we did report this a while ago. It was going to be early 2025 for her return. Um, she uh, suffered a, a knee injury um, back in March. Uh, she was able to uh, work through WrestleMania and grit through the uh, the sort of the damage Katarl split and all those things. Obviously, they were kind of able to do free birdie type matches mm-hmm. where she could stand on the outside, but no, recovery was necessary. It's going to be early 2025. Look, how early, we don't know, but it's not the worst thing to be coming back around WrestleMania season, is it? When you're hot in January, it's maybe the best time to be hot. Yeah, I think so. There's going to be quite a few names on this list who, uh, we're going to be talking in and around sort of Royal Rumble season and it's sort of par for the course for them to uh, pop up if they are going to be cleared around sort of December, January time Mm -hmm. uh, to to make their return in the Rumble because well, that's the the spot that's going to get the biggest reaction. Um, Or like you say, unfortunately, some people will have to wait till the post WrestleMania of 2025. But yeah, fingers crossed for Asuka. Love her. Gutted she's uh, injured and going to be out for a while. But then again, you know, it might not be the, the worst thing that she goes away and we miss her and she comes back, mm-hmm. obviously, because damage control have kind of run their course. Yeah, there's uh, there's never not going to be uh, title matches for someone like Asuka as well. Mm, Heal or baby face. Uh, right, let's move on to uh, Saquon Sugars, uh, a really exciting new talent in WWE. Unfortunately, uh, got injured in his first televised performance, taken mm. on uh, Tavian heights yeah. he um was uh signed when there was some uh culling over at the uh core deadlock pro roster and the former lucky ali uh, unfortunately like i say got injured in his uh, first televised debut performance he took to social media to, to launch a gofundme but all looks good uh, he claims he had his knee broken off in his first televised performance. He's going to be back late 2024, early 2025, but really one to look out for going forward, this guy. Yeah, he's not going to be the only one from the level up uh, NXT circuit, is he, that's taking time out. This is the thing in the reality, we seem to be in this era now of a bunch of like really exciting prospects coming in and the type of uh, NXT to main roster moves, the likes of which were just never happening Mm. realistically in the black and gold era. That's really cool, but the setback of that is obviously a lot of people are coming from a sporting background into an entirely different discipline. Their bodies may be built for one thing, and then all of a sudden, wrestling is an, is, is an entirely different thing. Not one better or worse than the other, but uh, yeah, it does feel like the uh, the injury list coming out of NXT grows bigger by the month, it seems. I don't want to pass any judgment on what goes on at the performance center, no. but uh, but get well soon to all the wrestlers in this list. Sticking with developmental, there's a few, developmental, there's a few we're going to get through. Yeah, here. Danny Palmer. Um, you know, Danny Palmer was making waves, I think, on NXT. Um, had like something of a standout match against Lola Vice, if yeah. you remember the women's breakout tournament. Uh, again, next in line, like provides these type of athletes that kind of feel like naturals, but nonetheless, wrestling is a brutal business. Um, she uh, did have a double hip surgery at the beginning of January. They are simply different breeds of people. Um, and we don't know much about uh, the recovery on that. So the status is currently still unknown. But uh, but again, Danny Palmer's got like years and years ahead of her, relatively sort of um, short in ring time up to this point. But yeah, double hip surgery from, uh, from what she's encountered so far. So fingers crossed uh, it'll be 2024, but it could be 2025 before we see her again. 
Uh, let's talk about one of our favourites from NXT level up. Big body Javi, Javier yeah, yeah. Bernal. Um, he's so, you've seen him, like you say, you may have seen him on NXT, you may have seen him on level up. He made sporadic yeah. appearances on the main roster. So I'm fairly certain he got destroyed by Bron Breaker a few months back. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, a mistimed dive against Riley Os uh, Chase Hughes' Riley Osborne mm -hmm. uh, broke his foot in a few places, according to yeah. Javi, unfortunately. Um, his return date is January 2025 <clears throat> at the earliest. But I really like him. He's a great character. Yeah, like Big Body Javi was one of those figures in NXT of which we are massive fans of here at What Culture. But um, it's not the easiest place to get over. Like oh. there is a, 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 a shark tank, and I mean that in a good sense in NXT, of different characters and different ideas and all these things that generate attention on a weekly basis. And yet, Big Body Javi was one that found a way, even in defeat a lot of the time, to really make his mark and make his name. So the, you felt his absence, I think, when he went away. And uh, yeah, you mentioned Bron Breaker. He, like, there is something, an art, to getting your arse handed to you by Bron Breaker. Mm. Big Body Javi was a master of that art, and I hope he's back sooner rather than There's later. someone uh, coming up a little bit later on who's, uh, I think, legit legitimately been injured by a uh, Bron Breaker spear that we will get to. Yeah, indeed. Um, NXT injuries, we're going to stick with them. Nikita Lyons, she has had more than one, unfortunately, yeah. of course. She returned from injury uh, that she suffered in 2023. She was on television a few weeks and then she was down again. Um, it's uh, it's that old uh, torn ACL curse that appears to strike the Performance Center. It has struck Nikita Lyons. However, as you may have seen through her very busy sort of active social media presence, uh, she's constantly on the road to recovery. She makes it very clear that she intends to return as soon as possible and as of this recording she's supposedly back from this current ACL injury within the next three months uh, NXT's women's division is firing on all cylinders at the moment and you sense the uh, the competitive um, element around some of these returns is to get back in the mix and get in amongst it again there are more names as we go through this of people that want to challenge Roxanne Perez yeah. people that want to be in the conversation with the likes of Jordan Grace coming over from TNA and indeed the wrestlers that are going to TNA with this opportunity and the benefit now that they've got the North American title of course, on yeah. NXT. Two singles titles to go for, as well as tag belts that cross pretty much all the brands at this point. Nikita Lyons was kind of seen as somebody that was fit, like hotly tipped for an Viral NXT sensation. title yeah. uh, So I wouldn't expect anything less when she does make a return. Three months, fingers crossed for Nikita Lyons. Gigi Dolin next. Uh, really devastating the injury yeah. to her because she was seemingly set for an amazing program with another one of our favourites from NXT, Ariana Grace. Um, <laughs> Torn ACL for the real life Priscilla Kelly, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, it's a thing we're going to be repeating quite a few times mm -hmm. on this list. Um, six to nine months recovery uh, means, unfortunately, it's going to be touch and go whether or not uh, she's going to make it in, back in time for WrestleMania season. But like I say, she could be another one of those ones where whoever it is, uh, standing victorious, post stand and deliver, yeah. is interrupted by a returning Gigi Dolin. Obviously, toxic attraction history. Mm -hmm. um, she's had a, a great time of it in, in NXT, aside from when she got her head kicked through a door. Um, and I, I'm excited to see what they do with her because she's another one on, on that long list of people who they have in NXT who you think they're doing great stuff on NXT but if there was suddenly a, a massive void that needed filling on the main roster she could easily step up and fill it. I think that's the point isn't it like Gigi Dolan's comeback at this point does it happen in NXT does it happen straight on the main roster based on the credit she's already got in the bank on NXT there was obviously things to do not least with Ariana Grace oh. but just really as a baby face she was kind of still coming into her own and still trying to find a way following the split of Toxic Attraction JC Jane has kind of settled into a whereas Gigi Dolin was uh, finding her feet a little bit, obviously, mm -hmm. before this uh, difficult injury. So, as you say, when she does come back, she has absolutely got that sort of credit with the audience at this point to come straight back in for a title shot, and she is not the only one, oh, because we move on to... Oh, yeah, uh, they keep teasing this one. Cora Jade, twist, it's a torn ACL. <laughs> uh, we have no joy in reporting this, but there are a lot of them. But yes, again, Cora Jade is somebody else that has suffered... Like more than one injury heartbreak at this point, but the news is good on her recovery. Uh, again, as we record this, it's been the next sort of three to six months for Cora Jade, and she is trying to accelerate that as well. She has made no secret of her attempt mm. to beat the uh, the doctor's orders about when she should come back. There are countless bits of social media interaction, not just with the likes of Roxanne Perez, but of course CM Punk, based on their history from when she was a fan and his work within NXT. So um seems as if the mood around the Cora Jade camp is very good. And of course, just before she disappeared off television, there was an NXT title shot she was unable to claim, I do believe, when she was like last returned turned to the roster so fingers crossed third time lucky I think for Cora Jade and uh, the title that has maybe eluded it up to this point uh, with a friend turn enemy turn friend in Roxanne Perez 
You sense that one's going to go again, don't you? Yeah, I reckon uh, this one is going to happen probably one of the soonest out of this, the, the yeah. names on this list, uh, maybe aside from Punk. Mm -hmm. uh, my prediction is uh, with the Great American Bash coming up on Saturday, the, what? the Great American Bash uh, coming up over the next few weeks on NXT TV uh, and the anticipated Roxanne Perez, the Hail title match, I think, Unfortunately for the EAL, as much as I think she's great too, uh, Roxanne Perez retained. She stood there. I've beaten everybody. Julia's not coming in yet. Stephanie Vaquez uh, still doing just live show appearances <laughs> or whatever. I think that's when Cora Jade comes back. And uh, Jesus, just that name. Four names I've just thrown out there, and I could name a whole lot more. Yeah, fighting for that NXT Women's Championship stacked division. Mm -hmm. Um, good news coming up with the next one. Uh, it's not a torn ACL. Bad news. We uh, don't know what on earth's going on no. with Akira Tozawa. He was just suddenly pull, pulled from the mini tour of Japan that WWE's planning. He last wrestled on the 1st of July episode of Main Event Wrestling, Pete Dunne. But uh, that's the, all the update I can give you. I, I've got nothing else. Um, yeah. No idea what's going on with him. Uh, I did see him dancing in the background of some TikTok that uh, I think Sol Ruka or someone was shooting. Yeah. So he's yeah. having a good time of it. Um, but no word on what it is. Uh, a real character um, and obviously heavily featured with the Chad Gable stuff over recent months. I still think there's potential for him to do more. I think he's he's great. And uh, speaking of people who are absolute putter in groups, we then move to Jimmy Uso. Uh, one of the more hotly anticipated returns yes. in all of WWE, right? So he's down with, a, again, an unknown ailment at present, but part of that could be to do with the write-off that he experienced post-WrestleMania. He lost to his brother Jay and then was bump. speared off the ramp through a table when attempting to save Roman Reigns in his two nights at WrestleMania 40. And then in the direct aftermath of that on the SmackDown following, WrestleMania was extricated from the bloodline by Tamatonga and Solo Sokoa and then obviously the changes that have taken place since then that have basically removed all presence of the original mm -hmm. bloodline uh, in the shadow of Solo as the new leader. One senses that Jimmy is coming back as a baby face, that he's going to reunite with Jay, oh. that he's going to reunite with Roman, that the no yeet is going to be replaced by a yeet, and that they're, uh, they're going to do the right thing by Paul Heyman, the wise man, uh, and the forces of good, the good line versus the bloodline. Yeah. And uh, I can't wait for Jimmy to make his comeback. Yeah, honestly, like considering the names on this list, if you just told me a few years ago you're going to be waiting with bated breath for a Jimmy Uso return, what I wouldn't believe you, but it's going to be huge, what isn't it? Yeah. Uh, right, let's talk about Cruz del Toro. Mm. Um, he is, uh, well, he was written off television, of course, because uh, Ridge Holland slammed the door on his hands. Yeah. Uh, but that wasn't the, the reason. Yeah, I'm not bloody sorry, I keep making mistakes. Wasn't the real reason for his injury. It was just obviously to give him that time off to recuperate from his injury. Um, he's had successful surgery. Uh, that was uh, posted on the 18th of April, his update on that. Uh, and all you can really say, there's no real definitive time frame compared to some of the others on this list is by the fall yeah he's going to be coming back so i don't know october fingers crossed like i i love uh whacking wild and cruz del toro and it felt like you know they're in the ascendancy as we headed towards wrestlemania mm -hmm. the legado and, and all that sort of stuff it's, I, I think cruz del toro and whacking wild are a hell of a team and uh, expect to see more of them as the year closes out. Yeah, um, and speaking of people that we hope to see back sooner rather than later, we move to Kofi Kingston. Now, he suffered a sprained AC when Karen Cross told him to fuck off on Raw recently, but that, of course, could be part of the storyline because Karen Cross has been working to mm. break down the Newsday's defences and bring Xavier Woods, if not into the final testament, just into the dark side of banter. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Kofi Kingston has uh, done remarkably well. One of those wrestlers like, um, sort of like a Chris Jericho, I guess. Kind of the last guys to not get injured that much. Yeah. Uh, Kofi Kingston's had a long stint of like just like working years. You always see like the records at the end of the year and he's near the top of most matches. A real workhorse and generally somebody that has uh, not been bitten by the, our old friend the injury bug too often. Uh, Don't make so, like it like it. Yeah I do apologise. Tasteless of me. Um, so with any luck he'll be back before the end of the summer. Hopefully before Xavier Woods is fully kidnapped, maybe given his own mega glove by uh, Paul Ellering or something like that. But yeah somebody needs to get in and save Xavier Woods so before yeah. it gets too late and Kofi seems like the man to do it. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, not the only returning member of the New Day. We can but dream. Tyler Beard, um, big yeah. strong boy, yeah. tore his pec clean off the bone during a match on NXT in early July. Mm. Uh, no pressure on the recovery for that, but obviously Cody Rhodes came back and now look at him. So uh, good luck with that, Tyler. Uh, six months That's is good. the general consensus of when he's going to come back. Yeah. So working that out, Maybe, 
Maybe around, maybe before, maybe just after the 2025 Royal Rumble, but he yeah. could be someone who would get a great reaction. They were doing obviously fantastic stuff with him, him and Pete Dunne, New mm -hmm. Catch Republic. They had a big uh, showcase match at WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, it feels like he's finally finding his feet on the main roster and they were doing some fun stuff in NXT as well. It bodes well for him, oddly enough, that they've actually split the team up immediately in his absence, doesn't it? The fact that Pete Dunne has gone on to have a singles run, I know traditionally that would mean, well, where's my spot? What do you do with me now? But there's kind of an inbuilt story, yeah. right? Like his friend goes on the shelf and Pete Dunne immediately looks at his other friends, finds Seamus and being like, I've got nobody now, and just turns <laughs> heel on him immediately. So there's Tyler Bates' inbuilt story when he comes back. There could be stuff with Pete Dunne, there could be something with Seamus, there's a prior sort of uh, relationship with various people on NXT. He himself could want one more run as a singles wrestler mm -hmm. on NXT, so there's still maybe like some unfinished business there in terms of singles titles. He could be the guy to dethrone over Femi. There is a lot for Tyler Bates to potentially do across all three brands, and a few years back you might not have said that. Yeah. So whilst injured now, you would like to think there's uh, the space for him when he returns. We wait with bated breath. Uh, this guy. This guy. Somebody that will always be space for. Oh, yeah. Big Babble, Bobby Lashley. Um, out currently, and uh, it's unknown when Bobby Lashley will return. Um, Sean Ross Sapp was able to confirm on one of those uh, Q&A uh, podcasts that he does um, that the uh, there was, obviously, you know, when he was announced for King of the Ring and then unable to work it, they did actually know of his injury status before then. So the injury is real or the absence was necessary, mm. but there's no timetable for any kind of return. So it might just be the fact that he's been, well, like, falling on his back while looking like that <laughs> yeah. for, like, nearly 20 years now. Uh, the man's a freak in nature and all the more awesome for it. So uh, come back whenever you're ready, Bobby Lashley. But obviously, we've seen kind of the... Uh, dissolution of his group with the Street Profits as a result of that and then mm -hmm. move off into something else. Um, and he hasn't really, been quite honest, found what fits in Triple H's WWE, no, not oddly yet. enough. Um, look, he's going to be old forever. It's Bobby Lashley. Look at the guy. But, like, yeah, the sooner he's back, the better. But it'd be interesting to see if it's actually a role that... Uh, he warrants and deserves a bit mm. more when he is when he is good to go. Yeah, even if he factors into the whole TNA relationship thing, of course. Yeah, of course, yeah. Multi-time TNA and Impact World Champion. But it's one of those ones that you never would wish an injury on anyone. Mm. Um, but it's it's a good time for him to go away, and when he comes back, who knows what the world title picture could look like. He is a money guy. Him versus Gunther, Jesus Christ. Him versus Gunther or him versus Cody. It's yeah. an instant match when they would just do that thing where somebody's back, the music plays, and they're on the ramp, and the champion. Oh no! Like Bobby Lashley is a perfect guy for yeah. that sort of comeback. Let's move on and talk about Ludwig Kaiser. Um, yeah, he's the one I alluded to earlier with broken ribs mm. uh, or fractured ribs, perhaps, yeah. um, uh, following a spot involving <laughs> well, being speared by the absolutely lethal Brom Breaker. It's going to happen, isn't it? Uh, no, it is broken ribs. I was right. Yeah, um, yeah that happened on the first of July. I'm not going to give you days, weeks, or months. I'm just going to say he's definitely going to be back in time for Bash in Berlin. Oh, I would imagine so. Man's an absolute piece. He's not going to want to miss that show. Um, look, Gunther is looking primed and ready to win the World Heavyweight title on Monday Night Raw, if not at SummerSlam against Damian Priest, maybe in a rematch mm -hmm. in Berlin. So one would think that Levi Kaiser will be a big part of Gunther's celebrations, but he's kind of starting to carve out something for himself mm -hmm. on Raw as well. Um, little mini programs with the likes of Sheamus. That feels like instant chemistry with Ilya Dragunov. Raw is very much a land of opportunity for mm -hmm. a guy like Ludwig Kaiser at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised if when Gunther has got that world title, they see something on a more singles route for Kaiser. Yeah, they could even switch him over to SmackDown with his missus, Tiffany Stratton, of course, being there. That's right, yeah. You never know. Uh, but yeah, excited for his return, and I do hope, yeah, he gets to be a part of that epic entrance for Gunther we anticipate in Berlin. To the tag division, and it's not good news for Ivar. Or um, Eric. Indeed, no. Alert. We'll, uh, we'll move to the other member of the Viking Raiders presently, but, um, but Ivar's situation at the moment was last quoted as very serious. If you remember, um, he did go under uh, the knife for double uh, neck fusion surgery, I think, in 2020. I don't know what all those words mean, but in order, it just sounds like the scariest yeah. thing that can happen to your body, doesn't it? Um, and it kept him out back then. Um, and ever since he returned from that, there was a view that he was on borrow time, and now he is obviously potentially losing some of that to being there on the surgery table. So fingers crossed that we hear more news coming out for Ivar soon because it doesn't end any better for the Viking Raiders at present, does it? No, I was going to say, Eric, uh, just to follow up on that one, great name, of course. Uh, he went underwent uh, neck fusion surgery as well. Uh, worked on on a C6 and C9 cervical spine. I don't know, sounds terrifying. He last wrestled uh, way back in September, mm. uh, wrestling Sh Cedric Alexander and Sheldon Benjamin on an episode of Main Event. Uh, but obviously, yeah, we, we talked about it at the time. Ivar was just sort of making do in his absence. 
I really want to see both these guys back. We've actually worked with them both, of course, back in the WCPW days. And despite how terrifying they look, they are lovely blokes. Uh, I want all the best of them. And I just want more Viking Rules matches in my life. Of everybody on this list as well, um, think of those. Think of your favourite War Raiders match. Think of your favourite Viking Raiders match. Think of your favourite Viking Rules match. And realise that when men that look like that move around like that, this is the penalty yeah. some of them pay. So fingers crossed they're better sooner rather than later. On to Charlotte Yes. Uh, it was pretty horrific, wasn't it? A tribute to the troop. She had that match with Asuka. It was a torn ACL, a torn MCL, oh. a torn meniscus. Uh, it was an instant WrestleMania miss, uh, yeah. which was obviously the biggest thing at the time because of the timing of the injury. Uh, but news is good, as opposed to some of the names on this list, is that she is expected back before the end of 2020. Good. Could be as late as December. That would only mark a year on the shelf, which is not bad going, considering the damage she did in that spot against Asuka. Um, Dave Meltzer had said, I think at the time it was going to be nine months, but obviously you don't rush, you don't mess around with that sort of thing. And the style that Charlotte works, you'd imagine she'd want to be back and fighting fit and back in the mix. Um, yeah, it's been another, a bit like kind of we were discussing with Bobby Lashley, somebody that's always been kind of at the pinnacle in WWE, mm -hmm. hasn't really yet figured out where she'll sit and land in this Triple H era. She had that weird title run that she when she lifted it off Ronda Rousey because Rousey told them, I want to lose the belt and I want to lose it tonight. And Charlotte was like, well, I'll take that, thanks very much. <laughs> and an absolute ripper, match of the year candidate with Rhea Ripley. Mm -hmm. But post that, it's been fairly quiet in mm -hmm. the world of the Queen. So we will see, I guess, when she returns, if she wants to make 2025 more familiar footing for somebody that has obviously since 2014 basically been an ever-present at the top of the card. Yeah, I'm conflicted with what they do with, with Charlotte Flair when she returns because, you know, uh, she's got an amazing reaction when she returns, so mm -hmm. you can easily put her as a baby face. But I think she works far better as a heel. She just exudes that yeah. so well. Um, but I suppose in terms of if it's the end of, of this year, the start of next year, it could be one of those where they don't necessarily risk it immediately as, she, as soon as she's cleared and just say, let's put you in the rumble, let's see what happens, let's see the lay of the land and then let's plan a route for you for, for WrestleMania because she's uh -huh. always one of the biggest names on the card. I think I could go to tag team Mega Powers and Rebecca Lynch now, they're friends again, you know. Get the belts on them, oh. see how many people you can elevate along that run, something like that. I like, like that. old guard at this point almost, don't they, you know? So. I didn't even think of that, that's yeah. really, really exciting. Um, right, final couple of names for you here. Shotzi. Um, Another one to fall to the Performance Center ACL epidemic. Yeah. Um, she was fighting for the NXT Women's Championship. God, I remember watching this. Mm -hmm. uh, I think against Valera Valkyria, and she just sort of landed awkwardly. I think it was even a pre-tape, which yeah. was, uh, made it even more because there was like noises coming out of the the NXT show, and you're like. What do you mean she's she's not involved in the match? Seen her carted out the show before yeah. you've seen the match itself, yeah. Uh, she Yeah, she landed awkwardly uh, doing an apron DDT. Um, she was out in from February, that's when it happened. Six to nine months, so one can assume, I mean, technically, possibly now, but it's probably safer to assume later on in the year, close to sort of November time is when we're going to see, hopefully, Shotzi back, um, because... She's just so unique, isn't she? Yeah, I think the NXT run, it was all the more unfortunate it happened there because she was one of those wrestlers who, in this era now of there being a bit more fluidity between the two brands, there being nothing really for her on the main roster whilst she's got all of this um, inbuilt character and inbuilt sort of credit with the audience to be able to go to NXT and have a match against the Lyra Valkyrie and feel credible even if it's only for like a two week run. She was in War Games of course coming up for this mm. time last year as part of the Babyface team alongside Charlotte Flair actually. Um, so you sense that there is always something for her on the main roster. She was very much a Triple H project going all the way back to black and gold if you remember. So five, six years now where she was given little moments where you thought you're not a now person but you're definitely a future person mm -hmm. and it's just not quite arrived for her yet. So you would imagine Imagine when she is back, presumably green hair returned, tank and all. Um, oh, she'll yes! Slot, she'll slot back in. I could see it, if she is back in time, I could see her as a perfect rumble surprise person. Yeah. Uh, the, the reaction she would generate, we talked for years now about these bloody deaf rebel inter entrance themes that do nothing. You splash Shotzi across the screens in time and you get her appearing burp, burp, on the tank straight away. She could, she could shoot at someone and then they get not eliminated. Through she the... could shoot. Um, C4 energy cans because I don't know if you remember this. It's part of the countdown when wrestlers come out, aren't they? So yeah, she could fire some of them. Nine eight seven six five C4. Yeah, C4, you get tired in the rumble. You need an energy beast. Don't drink one of them. <laughs> Send you through the roof. Uh, and somebody who never needs an energy drink because that's what the E should stand for. Our close personal friend, Big E. Uh, we always say get well soon, Big E, and by well we mean. 
just physically well. Come back to wrestling if you want to, um, but you don't need to. March 2022, that's coming on oh, 27 that's... months and counting since, of course, that unfortunate neck injury. His C1 and C6 vertebrae were both fractured. Uh, he has actually updated his own social media as recently as this week, as we record, to say that he's got stem cells flowing through his body. Yes! Uh, You're so, telling yeah. me there's a chance! Yeah, man, Rey Mysterio's knees keep on kicking, so if Biggie wants it, great. If not, and it just means he has to work panels with CM Punk for the rest of his days, I'm fine with that too. Give them their own show, WWE. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, like, we love Biggie. Who doesn't love Biggie? Everyone loves Biggie. But as much as I would love to see this site again, this man as the world champion in his gear, the whole deal, um, he did enough for all of us, and if he wants to call it a day after injuries like that, that is absolutely fine. So whilst the prognosis is potentially never a comeback, it's wrestling, so you never say never. Yeah, I'm just so conflicted when it comes to talking about E all the time. Obviously, we love him so much. Mm. Everyone in wrestling really echoes that sentiment. Um, and you'd love to see him back wrestling, but it, only if it's okay. Yeah. Uh, and only if he's happy to do it. Maybe, you know, uh, he, he doesn't want to do it after everything that's gone on. And he's carved out this uh, alternative career for himself. He's such a personality. Like, yeah. that's not an act. That's who he is uh, all of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just I just hope for the best for him for whatever happens. It'd be nice uh, to see him back. Tell in us your room. best and we want that. Because yeah. You tell us what you want and then we'll be like, great, go and do that. He's just he's just the best guy. Yeah. Um, I, you know, you'd never wish this on anyone, but especially not someone like he never deserved uh, what he's had to go through. It's so unfortunate how it happened, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but we just cross everything um, that the, the stem cells do their do their job, and maybe just maybe we see him back in a wrestling ring again if he wants to do it. But yeah. um, God, I miss him so much. Me too. Me too. I mean, I don't know whether I want him to to be forced to travel all over the country, but I'd, I'd happily want to have him on a commentary team week in and week out. Panels, man. Kick off panels. Yeah. P kick off panels with him, Punk, Wade Barrett, just fighting each other. I'll take that. Well dressed men. Talking a good fight. That's all I need. Yeah. But uh, let us know your thoughts on everyone we discussed, who you're most excited to see return in the comments section below. Like, share, subscribe. And while you're on it, why not check out this video right here? Bye.